The Cart That Carried Martin by Eve Bunting, illustrated by Don Tate. Before I start, um, we've been talking and reading and listening about Martin Luther King Jr. this week. Uh, sadly enough, his message of freedom and equality and justice uh, was not well received by everybody. And there was a very, very unhappy man who ended the life of Martin Luther King Jr. This is the story about Martin Luther King Jr.'s funeral. The cart was old. Its paint had faded. It was for sale outside Cook's Antiques and Stuff. Nobody wanted it. Then two men came. This is exactly what we're looking for, one said. We'll buy it. But the store was closed. They came by again. The store was still closed. We'll borrow it, the first man said. We can't do that, the other replied. We can. We'll bring it back when he's finished with it. A truck was brought to take away the cart. Friends painted it green. It's the color of grass when it rains, a woman said. He would like that, said a man. The car was moved again and parked at the Ebenezer Baptist Church, waiting. Two mules were hitched to the cart. The mules' names were Bell and Ada. Ordinary mules were an ordinary funeral, the people told one another. That was what he wanted. The mule is a symbol of freedom, someone said. Each slave was promised a mule and forty acres when he was freed. Crowds surrounded the church, waiting in the April morning for the service to begin. Many could not get inside. They climbed trees and lamp posts and stop signs. They stood on parked cars. The roof of a Cadillac, which is a type of car, collapsed under some of them. The church throbbed with the sounds of singing. The songs were not sad but there was a terrible sadness in them anyway. Men and women and children wept. The mules stood almost motionless. They flicked only their ears as the coffin was carried from the church and placed in the cart. At the command, Bell and Ada began pulling. The cart was not heavy. The coffin was not heavy. The man inside it was not heavy. His great spirit had been the heaviest part of him, and it could not be kept in a coffin. The cart rolled through the streets of Atlanta, past the Georgia State Capitol. Sometimes the crowd sang as it passed, We shall overcome, they promised. Sometimes they stood in a holy silence, and the only sound was the rumble of the wooden wheels. Men walked in front, holding the reins of the mules. The widow, that would be Martin Luther King Jr.'s wife, walked behind, her grief hidden by her veil. At Morehouse College, the mules obeyed the command to stop. The coffin was taken into the college quadrangle for a second service. Outside the college, another crowd pressed forward. Bells pealed, more people sang. The second service ended. The coffin was carried out and placed in a hearse for the drive to the cemetery. Is it over, someone asked. It will never be over, replied another. What he stands for lives on. Bell and Ada were taken back to the farm. For them it was over. The simple wooden cart was returned to Cook's Antiques and Stuff. It had only been borrowed. Now there were many offers to buy it. In the end, it was sold to the King family and placed in the Martin Luther King Jr. National Historic Site. People walk around the cart now. They lean across the velvet rope 
that separates it from the crowd. They stare. Men take off their caps. This is the humble cart that, not so long ago, carried greatness. And there's the actual picture taken on that day. Have empathy for people. Try to help them out. Think of other people, not just yourself. 